This is the place to go for anime, manga, comics, video games, all pop culture information. This is the place that you need to be. This program is brought to you by Black and Studios Entertainment Division. Remember, it's Black and This is Diana Duwap, and you are listening to the Elijah Bailey Podcast. Thanks for downloading the Elijah Bailey Show from iTunes or BlackStudios.com. And here's a word from some of the folks that make it possible for you to hear this show for free every Thursday. Providing bankruptcy services throughout the state of Oklahoma, Bowler & Associates is a bankruptcy law firm based in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Their mission is to relieve you from threat of debt collectors, garnishments, repossessions, tax levies, foreclosures, and much more. Backed by more than 20 years of experience in the legal field, they excel in finding the quickest, most effective, and most affordable solution to all your legal and financial troubles. You can find them at Bowler Law on Facebook and also visit the website at www.bowlerlawfirm.com. Reach them at 405-733-3000. Email them at bankruptcy at bowlerandassociates.com. Looking for your voice to be heard? Have a passion and want to share it with those of a common mindset? Have a business or a brand that needs to get the word out but don't know where to advertise? Contact Black & Studios, a full-spectrum, cutting-edge podcast studio that services clients from all over the country. Black & Studios offers you more than just a podcast. We offer you an experience. In-house production from audio-video recording, editing, marketing, advertisement, and exposure with over thousands of people listening weekly. Black & Studios doesn't hesitate to back local businesses. So when you want your voice heard, Black & Studios has your back. Search Black & Studios on all social platforms. Email at podcast at blackandstudios.com or visit us at blackandstudios.com. And remember, it's Black & What's up, everybody? We are back. And three, two, one. Friends, otakus, comic nerds, and pop culture enthusiasts, lend me your ears, for today I bring you great tidings as we deep dive into some of my favorite topics. Welcome back to the Elijah Bailey Show, where we believe Krillin is the strongest human and has the best life in DBZ. Storm is the actual leader of the X-Men, and another Splinter Cell game is much needed. You know what time it is. I'm your host, Elijah 5000, here to inform, educate, and cultivate a community around the mediums that we love uh oh is 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 my lovely picture not up let me go ahead and get that scene up for you guys but we are back this is episode 273 it is the fifth uh week of the month so this is where we can deep dive and, and do a little bit of uh whatever we want and i've talked about this several times before and I might open them. The reason I have the windows open today is because I'm trying to get this damn glare off these glasses. These are my favorite pair of glasses, but they have so much of a glare on them. And I feel like I need to open up the window. But I digress. Um, I've talked about this before. Uh, when my mom's been on the show, me and Buck talking about old cartoons and shows that we used to watch. And me on the Solo Dolo shows talking about some of my favorite shit. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe uh, TV series, the Masters of the Universe comics that came out in 81 with the toy line and the mini comic series, uh, G.I. Joe, just all kind of shit like that was my favorite. And so um, Masters of the Universe Revolu Revelations came out and I watched, uh, it, it, it's, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. I like the magical girl transformation that Prince Adam goes through to turn into He-Man. Um, and we're gonna deep dive into that. Plus we got some news about Dragon Ball Super's film coming out in 2022, Superhero, and the uh, next year that the next DBZ or DBS film will come out is, uh, I also have that information for you, but let's go ahead and get right into the show. Let me stand up for a minute. Open those blinds so you get some light on this beautiful chocolate complexion. And then I got some uh, stuff to go in over last week. What happened last week? Because you guys might have missed out on some things. So let's go ahead and start 
the illustrious Elijah Bailey Show. All right, we're going to have to go ahead and cut the music to get right into it. This hair right here just sticking out. It's bothering me. I got to tell you guys, I got to be honest with you guys, because I watched a show today that uh, it's back from uh, 2008. It's called The Moment of Truth. It was actually, uh, I don't even know what his name is, but he is the host for The Bachelor. That was one of his first shows he's on. And to see that show, it, it just broke my heart that people couldn't tell the truth. So today I'm going to keep it truthful with you. Uh, let's dive right into today's show because I don't want to get behind. So things that I want to share with you guys, things that have been happening. If you did not join July 24th, which was a Saturday at 5 p.m., I was in the Fandom and Fiction po- uh, panel for Podbeam, who was our hosting site, Storytelling Podcast Week, and it was amazing. We got to talk about our fandoms, about our communities, about you guys that listen to the podcast, the things that inspire us, the things that we're doing as creators, um, and it was really cool. That episode will drop after this one, so it will be, well, it'll be a bonus episode, so look in bonus tracks, um, and then we will come back next week talking all comics on our comics episode uh, for episode 274. Outside of that, what can I say? We talked about the, the workouts last time. You know, me doing the, the run in, my knees feeling better, but I feel like there's some uh, meniscus damage in there. So that's going to be my next venture is to self rehab and, and prepare uh, as much as I can because I, I am going to have to go to the dock on this one. So uh, that's it. The dogs are doing well. I've uh, been outside tending to the garden, tending just to the yard. I got up, felt good, mowed the other day, went into the um, the the little uh, garden uh, weed. I don't even know what to call it. There's so many <laughs> weeds out there now. I tried to spray some Roundup on there, but it, apparently the mechanism's fucked up, so i am got to use one of the spray bottles now. But there's so many weeds. They're, they're so high, so tall, just because we've been getting non well. We were getting nonstop rain, and it, it was just dreadful. It was horrible. Uh, everything's growing, which is always good. We love the green, but trees are ha- from where the the storms hit, and we had the heavy winds and the snow, and they broke over. Now with all the extra lusciousness that we're getting, they're drooping even further. So I'm outside, you know, cutting limbs and branches down. Then I break my equipment that I just bought for that shit. So it's been like the drizzling shits uh, every now and then. But that's it for me and what I've been doing personally. It's time to go ahead and get into the today's show. Um, now, let's go ahead and hit this character first. We're going to dive into Taiyo Say, where we honor um, a character and I know I put the picture in here somewhere. I feel like I did. There we go. There we go. We are going to take a look at the girl, Rhonda, a woman with a dark past and a mysterious power as she is pursued by an unknown assailant after the death of her father. Aided only by her wits and a pair of orphans, Rhonda journeys through a decaying dystopian metropolis populated by raiders, gangs, and supernatural. Although City of uh, our City Children of Ether is, the, is only 14 minutes long it's definitely worth the watch and this is where you can find Rhonda on her journey so it's a quick watch it's very cool but this is another character of color that we're going to celebrate today and we're going to keep going through them uh, because more and more are being created if you guys have not been keeping up Nubia has a new beginning a new story I wish I had the art out I, I, I was going to say I'll try to find it during the show but I think I'm going to be doing a lot here within today's show but Nubia has been doing really really tremendous in the comic sales with the first issue and looks beautiful um they took really good care of of the, of the design and the, the aesthetic so uh let's go ahead and go get into the articles so this week is going to be I'm not even going to lie it's super anime heavy there's a lot of anime news that I'm looking forward to there's a lot of things that I wanted to talk about that came out and uh let's go ahead and try to kick that kick this uh deal off now my hero academia has been making waves um and i think uh demon slayer has been talking to My Hero Academia and been like, hold my beer. But now that we have a film uh, coming, let's go ahead and talk about that because that has led to some interesting choices and some toy products that you guys are going to hear me get into today. But here is the trailer. Oh, shit. Let me move this up so you can see it better. This is the trailer for the next Demon Slayer film. 
uh, or not Demon Slayer, my bad, My Hero Academia film. Uh, so they are trying to take back the the uh, top of the charge from Demon Slayer. My Hero Academia, mo- the movie, World Heroes Mission Anime uh, Film Special Promo Video Stream, the staff of My Hero Academia, the movie, World Heroes Mission, the third anime film in the My Hero franchise, unveiled a special promotion promotional video on Monday. Um, the uh, new characters and cast, which I have pictures of, I'll put these up, uh, after the trailer ends, but, uh, the cast include, uh, and we'll go through these, but it goes from left to right, uh, Maria Ise as Belos, and they are, the pictures, whenever you see them, they're right above their character that they're portraying, Junya Ino, uh, Inoki as Sir Penta, Pentas, Yurichiro, uh, Umahara as Shidero, Shogo Sakata as Leviathan, uh, Hirofume Nojima as Alan Kay, and then Yoko Hona as Claire Voyance. Um, Bellos, uh, Sir Pentis, Shadero, and Leviathan are members of the mysterious organization called Humorize No a Villain, who aims to exterminate all who hold quirks. Claire Covoyant, or <laughs> Clairvoyant is a pro hero in Ocean, and Alan Kay is a researcher of the uh, Humorize No Villain organization. Megumi uh, Hayashibara will join the film's cast as Pino, which will be a new character. So let's go ahead and uh, pull those pictures up. Here is... um, where Did I get the cast? Here is Pino that I'm talking about right now. And this is going to be the next character that we talk about. But uh, again, this is Megumi uh, Hayashibara, who's playing Pino. Uh, the trusted partner of Rhodey, uh, who is going to be played by Ryo Yoshizawa. And then underneath in blue, Kayazuya Nakaya will play Flet Turn. Uh, character romanization not confirmed. The leader of the organization that threatens the world, uh, Horiyoshi, Horikoshi, design the new character. So uh, in the film story, a mysterious organization dedicated to the destruction of people with quirks has issued a threat and set bombs all over the world. Pro heroes uh, and those in hero internships scramble to find the bombs. Deku, Bakugo, and Todoroki encounter Rodi, voiced by Ryo Yoshizawa, a boy living in a mobile home in their uh, designated area. And uh, they end up working together. The film will open in J- uh, Japan on August 6th. Original manga creator uh, Koho uh, Horikoshi will again serve as chief supervisor and original character designer. Uh, so uh, that got me excited because, as you guys know, My Hero Academia, you know, we watch the films. We see everything's going on. I guess I don't have the uh, picture of the voice actors, but here is the design for the latest um, poster. As My Hero Academia slander is tolerated. <laughs> what a fan of gaming! Uh, um, but I'm I'm excited about it because my, my heroes stayed on track. You know, I like deviated a little bit because me and my wife were watching it together and then we stopped watching because we got shit to watch. There's a lot of shit going on in our nerd uh, sphere. So I jumped off and jumped back on. And so now me and Buck are both catching up. So this is exciting to see where they go and how it ties into the next film, kind of like Demon Slayer and some of the other films, Jujutsu Kaisen, that are really heavily tying in the world into the main story. Was there anything else with this? Oh, yeah, this led me to this next one. Now, I'm all about, um, we'll go ahead and just pull her up now. I'm all about action figures, right? Funimation launched figure of My Hero Academia's Invisible Girl. So Funimation announced at its summer uh, 2021 season preview event in June that it will sell the figure of My Hero Academia's Toru Hagakuri, the girl with the in, uh, invisible powers. According to Funimation, it is the world's first official uh, figure of a character. Her appearance is what you expect. Now, I looked at this. Now, 
let me see. Okay. I, I was trying to see if I need to go to the web page. The figure features clear stands and posing rods to proximately, uh, yeah, proximately show that the character's gloves and boots are there. So she's she could be stretching out this way with one leg off the ground, or she could just be stretching with her arms. You know, it it it's supposed to put her in in play. Uh, but this is seventeen ninety nine. Now I said, okay, the 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 plastic that they're using for this. I don't know the quality, right? But for what we're getting here, you guys see the picture, seventeen ninety nine for that. that I kind of get it, but then I don't get it. Um, but then they sold me, right? Let me go ahead and pull this up. If you go to Funimation's page, um, oh, I might. Uh, they've posted so much since then. But it, this is on Funimation's page. You can watch the um, My Hero Academia tweet that they posted. So I'm about to pull this up now. And we're about to... Yeah, we're going to watch this. Now, this kind of sold me on buying it because it's cute. You have the invisible girl. She's sitting there with Deku and the rest of the crew. And uh, it's it's the mocap, and they're just sitting here. So go ahead. This is what they they kind of sold me on. Because I like the 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 clay stop motion stuff, and so you see Deku here. She's she's sneaking up. She doesn't have her gloves on or her shoes. Boom! A blast him hits him. It's nice. He said, "I dropped that shit." I'm on uh, the One Piece grind. Extremely more happier, bro. Who's gonna buy that? One Piece train. Thank you for jumping on. I think everybody had a, had some time to clear their heads uh, during quarantine, you know, and then they really got on One Piece. So yes, it's welcome, welcome, welcome aboard. Uh, I don't know for seventeen. I get the the fact that she is a cool and crucial character to the show when it comes to levity, right? Because the show is very heavy uh, in darkness. Um, they, you know, you're getting the villain arc, you have the, the vigilante and the fugitive and, and all that stuff. Uh, and she's like the Peter Parker of the show, you know, bringing that comedy. But for 1799, I don't know if I just need like a platform with some shoes and then hand sticking up. So that's my take on it. Uh, oh yeah. Do we have this? Yeah, we're about to, I'm about to find a clip of this because I thought this was so cool. Now, we've gotten so much information from uh the phenomenal James Gunn who's been doing the Suicide Squad, which I say let me say again, the Suicide Squad, not Suicide Squad. And uh people were asking why he picked uh you know, the villain that he did. So, let's go ahead and pop this uh this bad boy in. And I'll let you guys strap in. Now, YouTube, we, we've we've done this dance. This is the, all the videos that are, are used in this show are just a promotional marketing tool. So there's no reason to get a bug up your draws. This is the trailer for the Suicide Squad, um, which is coming soon. Let's go ahead and talk about our main villain, Starro. So uh, James Gunn had an interview with uh, Comic Book and Collider and several other um uh, magazine and, and news sources and he was talking about why he picked Starro. He said he told reporters that as silly as Starro can seem on paper, he's always found the character legitimately scary. He said, well I just, I wanted a major DC villain that is a major DC villain that people wouldn't expect to be in a movie um, and I've always loved Starro. I mean, as a kid I found Starro completely terrifying. The idea of this giant starfish with one big guy that shoots things uh, out of him to take over people's brains like those old pictures with Superman and Star on his face. And I know you guys have seen this before. If uh, you ever watched the Justice League, I think it came back or they redid the episode for Justice League Unlimited. Um, it was in Superman. I mean, it's been, you Star has been in a lot of DC continuity, especially animated stuff. So, uh, he continues always scared, uh, the shit out of me. So it was about, taking something that was completely mind you ridiculous that looks uh, you know putting him into the setting that is gritty of uh, the streets of um uh, panama and then allowing him to 
do his scary business, but he's also completely outrageous. And so that mix of things appealed to the aesthetic. And I love the fact we get this huge star. I can't wait to see who's uh, taken over. But again, if you are forgetting, we're seeing the cast now. You have uh, Harley Quinn, Bloodsport, Peacemaker, Captain Boomerang, uh, Ratcatcher number two, Savant, King Shark, Blackguard, Javelin, um, Harley Quinn, and everybody is... But they're fighting on the legendary Corto Maltese. So I'm ready for this film. I'm ready to see what it has offered. James Gunn has not disappointed. The way that he uh, you know, brought Guardians of the Galaxy to life, which I really wasn't looking forward to, I'm excited to see what, he, what he's doing. Um, she's definitely not Peter Parker. I feel like she is. I feel like if you like she doesn't have to be the hero like there's people in the universe that you can say don't do as much as some other heroes but the the potential that they have as far as what they do morally it far gra- far greater surpasses what they do as a superhero which is kind of hard to do like with Spider-Man and the Flash but those are characters where if they're not in the universe shit goes to hell in a handbasket super fast and it doesn't always have to do with you know, they're superpowers. That's all I'm saying. Um, so Starro is coming to the Suicide Squad. I'm excited about that. This was cool. Uh, I, I, the pictures are up on their Instagram page. I'm going to see. I'm going to read this article, and then I'm just going to move it. This comes from comicbook.com. Uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series reportedly cast as Princess Leia. So Obi-Wan has found a young Princess Leia. Now, this is that's why this is important, because this is the next Leia that we have after Carrie Fisher. The live-action Star Wars series set a decade after the downfall of Obi-Wan's Jedi apprentice Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, reportedly involves a young Leia and Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader's twin uh, uh uh, Dark Vader's twin children that separated at birth, according to Star Wars uh, scooper Jordan of uh, Cinelix, and then uh, Vivian Laria Blair of uh, Bird Box. Now I remember will be uh, will play a big part in the Kenobi as well as Princess Leia Organa. So I was trying to remember where I knew her face from. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this picture up this is going to be your new princess leia the the picture choice is very or very weird she already looks like she's tired of her acting career as it is but this is who we get so this is interesting we're getting again we were we wanted to know where kenobi was coming from where it was going with what were we doing and then we wanted to see who was going to be cast in what roles and so this is our princess leia so i think she did good in the bird box i don't really think she did too much but yeah i'm excited uh next on the news front and i said this was anime heavy that you know star wars dives out of it the comics dive out of it i know that armor wars we don't really have too much but don Cheadle said that they were already in talks for um how armor wars and things excuse me, how Armor Wars was going to tie into everything that's been happening with, um, like, uh, the advanced robotics that happened in WandaVision, some of the things that happened in some previous films uh, from the Iron Man franchise and so on. So I'm excited to see uh, Rhodey get his comeuppance because that scene where he just, like, obliterates the the truck that Ant-Man is trying to hit him with is just... It's like, that's what I want from War Machine. I want all the weaponry. I want him to blast, and I want him to kick ass. And it seems like that was when he was at his, his highest. But he also had a cameo on uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I'm excited to see what goes on. Um, oh, this right here. We have a lot of nominees, but I thought this was interesting. Harvey Awards nominate Chainsaw Man and several other manga. So this comes from Anime News Network. This actually dropped on the 18th. The Harvey Awards, which honors outstanding work in comics and subsequent uh, uh, subsequent art, revealed its list of nominees for this year's awards on Friday. The nominees for Best Manga category. And we'll go over those right now. We have Naoki um, Urasawa's Asadora from Viz Media, and I'm all about Viz Media. Viz Media right now, I just caught up. 
uh, 71 chapters for a mashal, uh, magic and muscle or muscle and magic. And I'm just, I'm loving all the, the manga that I'm finding. So if you can get to Viz Media, it's $1.99 a month. Have uh, There's one, two, three, four out of these five uh, in this category are from Viz Media. So uh, let's continue. So we have Asadora. Then we have Kato Gaku's uh, Boys Run the Riot on uh, Kandansha. Kodansha comics. Then we have Tatsuki Fujimoto's Chainsaw Man. And even before this got popular and they were talking about the anime and they went a little bit back into the manga, I was hyping this shit up because I was reading it and it's a different story. Undead Unluck, Chainsaw Man, they change your perspective of the world that you live in because everything's happening on Earth. It's just so phenomenal. I'm glad this one made it up here. Then another one that you hear, uh, especially Bucky talk about, Junji Ito's Renmina is uh, also from Viz Media, just like Chainsaw Man. That's been nominated. And this last one right here is one that's cute and fun, Spy Family. This is on Viz Media. I'm actually like 45, 46 chapters in, and I think they're in the 70s or maybe 90s right now. But those were your nominations for Best Manga Category. It says the Harvey's Award added the Best Manga Category in 2018. Uh, Kabi Nagata's uh, My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness, this one right here, manga won the first award in this category. Um, Kohei Horikoshi's My Hero Academia soon followed and won the award in 2019. And then uh, Kamome Sharahara's Witch Hat uh, Atelier. And now this one is one I've heard about that uh, I haven't read, but this one won last year with the God of Manga, um, Osumu Takoza. Uh, Tezuka being inducted into the Harvey Awards Hall of Fame. So when we're talking about the manga that get honored here, these are mangas that have done very, very well narratively and compelled a lot of people not only to buy volumes, but to continue to push this through the community because the Chainsaw Man community... If you know about Chainsaw Man, it's like the Baki community, like uh, Tekken Den Tough, Tough... Um, uh, zombie powder. If you know about these manga right here, you're steeped in that community deep. And that's what we're getting here. Um, this article again, came from, comes from anime news network. It said in previous years, manga were nominated alongside other comics in the best American edition of foreign, uh, material category. The last manga to win in the category was Hajime, Isayama's Attack on Titan, which if you guys have not read, you guys need to need to read. I know it's amazing to watch the anime and the anime is fucking crazy, but you guys need to go ahead and read the manga because, again, manga go more in depth than anime. Uh, they have more room to work and talk about what's going on. But that happened in 2014. Then also One Punch Man and... Uh, show a history of Japan, uh, which, uh, the book is also titled 1953 to 1989 were nominated in 2016, but did not win. Then best American edition of a foreign material is no longer a category because we've broken them down even more. Uh, the ceremony will have a live stream during New York comic con, which will take place October 7th and the 9th. But here are your nominees. I'm very happy about all of these. Um, there's just something lately. I've just been reading a shit ton of manga, and they've they've all been very compelling. Just because the stories differ so drastically, but they're all steeply, they're all heavy in their genre. If you know what I mean, they have the common tropes, but then there's some things that make them so much different from other manga in that in that genre. Uh, only a couple of more. We got two more. Uh, I, I'm not going to pull anything up for this, but I wanted to read this because this was pretty cool. The Yen Press reveals the audiobook voices uh, for Sword Art Online, Overlord, The Saga of Tanya, The Evil Novels. So Yen Audio, Yen Press, new imprint for audiobooks announced on Friday. The voice artist who will narrate its audiobook adaptations from uh, Riki Kawahara's Sword Art Online light novel series. Uh, Kugin Mariyama's Overlord light novel series and Carlos Zinn's The Saga of Tanya the Evil light novel series. Brian uh, Pinbrook, what did I say Pinbrook? 
Pappenbrook, which you've heard not only me, but Josh Kane also talk about. And shout out to Josh Kane. Uh, we'll narrate the Sword Art Online audiobook. Christopher Guerrero, uh, Guerrero will narrate the Overlord audiobook. And then Monica Real will narrate, narrate, narrate the Saga of Tanya the Evil audiobook. The company will... Um, had announced last month that Ki Hong Lee will narrate, narrate the solo leveling audiobook. Which, if you're not on solo leveling, get on that shit. Get on that shit now. That is another community that you need to dive heavy into. Uh, Yin Audio also announced that it will host the Yin Audio panel at the virtual Crunchyroll Expo, taking place from August 5th to August 7th, featuring director Caitlin Davies. And voice actor Christopher Guerrero and Bryce Pappenbrook. The event will also feature uh, samples from the company's upcoming audio books. Um, make sure to, to make notes. There was something that Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll is very good about sending out stuff, especially for their events, their, their virtual events or the in-person events. So check your emails, go to crunchyroll.com, get information on that. So that way you guys can be a part of it. Last but not least, finally we got a trailer we have two trailers there's an adult swim which is the shorter trailer we're going to pull up the um crunchyroll trailer of blade runner black lotus so let's go ahead and get this started and then i'll read what they what they put in on this this looks beautiful i really like this it kind of reminds me of sifu and some of the games that are coming out now um but again this comes from anime news network the staff and cast for this fall's Blade Runner Black Lotus anime series debuted a new trailer and key art for the project during their stream Comic-Con at Home 2021 panel on Friday. They announced that Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter Alicia Cara is contributing music to the series, including the original song, Feel You Now, as heard in the trailer. Again, you guys know we ain't playing that music. It's hard enough to play trailers on the channel as it is, but I digress. The dark science fiction anime series delves into who is uh, running the world in the aftermath in the aftermath of the Blade Runner Blackout 2022 anime short. After the uh, Tyrell Corporation from the original Blade Runner film set in 2019 and before the Wallace Corporation from Blade Runner 2049 sequel, unlike the films, the series is set from the perspective of the hunted, a female replicant or an artificial, artificially created humanoid being. The staff emphasized that the anime series reflects the dystopian world with the anti-capitalist theme from uh, Philip K. Dick's original novel do androids dream of electric uh, electric sheep uh, because of that it also reflects what is happening in the real world now in that despite the class divide discrimination and alienation there could still be love and hope um the article continues the cast includes and it gives you all the english and japanese voice actors let's run this real quick you have uh, jessica henwick hang on let's go ahead the trailer's done but we have Jessica Henwick and Ar Arasa Shida as Ellie, a female replicant created for the secret and unknown purpose. Uh, Will Yoon Lee and Shin Shinshu Fuju as Joseph, a mysterious figure who owns a spare parts junkyard in Los Angeles. Samaria Wiley and Takako Honda as Alani Davis, a fresh LAPD recruit. Brian Cox and uh, Takaya Hashi as Neander, Neander Wallace Sr., founder and CEO of Wallace Corporation. Uh, Wes Bentley and Takahito Koyashu as Neander Wallace Jr., a brilliant scientist working for his father. Joseph uh, Damo and then Titan Kushinoko, Kushinoki as Marlo, a deadly Blade Runner. Uh, Peyton List and Yoshiko, Yoshiko Sakakibara as Josephine Grant, the wife of the police chief. Stephen Root, Stephen Root, and then Haku Otsuka as Earl Grant, police chief of the LAPD. Um, uh, Barkhad Abid and Takayuki Sinaba as Doc Badger, a black market dealer. 
Greg Henry, Masane Sukayama as senior uh, banister, a, po- a politician with stronger feelings on replicant p- uh, production. Our last two, Henry Zinri and Akio Najomi as Dr. M, a brilliant doctor and professor of medicine, and uh, Jason uh, Spisak, and then Kazuki Yao as Hopper, a journalist in the pocket of the Wallace Corporation. Crunchyroll and Adult Swim are partnering with Alcon Entertainment to produce 13-episode television anime series. The anime is based on Blade Runner 2049, the sequel to the 1982 Blade Runner film. The series story will take place in 2032 between the two films and will include some familiar characters. Um, so that is it for the news before we head into the main topics, which I'm going to get into my Masters of the Universe review as well as uh, what we found out about Dragon Ball Super Superheroes right after this commercial break. I will catch you guys after this pause for the cause. <laughs> Hey you, are you tired of having to hear about a hero rushing in to save the day, getting all the glory and the fame from all the fans? Well, if this sounds like you, then come on down and join the League of Villains and help us tear down that horrible world of peace and create a world of wonderful chaos. Remember, being a villain's not about one for all, it's about all for one. <laughs> Need a magic sword? Stylish new threads? Access to a video game before it comes out? Or to fall in love? It can all be yours. Give us a ring at Gotta Goddess where we can provide you with your very own goddess, fully equipped with one no-strings-attached wish. Call today and use magic word gag to get a discount on your first wish to be fulfilled. Side effects may, but are not excluded to death, dismemberment, disorientation, irritable bowel syndrome, headaches, nose aches, toothaches, and addiction to anime, falling in love with the wrong person, and more. Welcome back. Welcome back. What up, everybody? As you can see, there's a there's a man that's over there dancing in the corner. We are back, and we're getting ready to talk about Dragon Ball Super Superhero. We got this update, and we've been getting updates for a while now. If you guys have been following Geekdom 101, follow Danny on his channel, giving you reliable information from his contacts all over the world. But we knew that they were getting we were getting to film in 2022, and we were getting information. And so at Comic Con's uh, Comic Con at Home in San Diego, Toy announced at the special Dragon Ball panel uh, virtual event on Friday that the second anime film in the Dragon Ball Super franchise will be titled Dragon Ball Super Superhero. As the name suggests, the film will focus. On the superhero aspect, the staff at the panel, which include uh, Masako uh, Noizawa, who is the voice of Goku, been uh, she's been doing the voice for uh, the longest time since the the series started in eight in the eighties. Um, Aikyo Iyoki, executive producer, of Dragon Ball series, and editor of the series creator uh, Akira Toriyama. And I think if things don't go through Toriyama, they go directly through him. Um, and then also Norihiro, Norihiro uh, Hayashida, producer of the television, anime, and movies of the Dragon Ball series, unveiled a teaser featuring Goku. And we read the, the tweet and the stuff that Akira had posted talking about how this Dragon Ball would look different, how everybody, how he hopes to enjoy it because it will be a completely different experience between Akira Aiko and then Norhito, like they are all very, very well read and versed in the things they've done. They've created like the last, the Dragon Ball Broly, which was phenomenal. They are going to continue on that. And we got like a little teaser after we get this song. And I'm, I'm hoping, uh, if you guys uh, know who this is, I'm hoping that uh, Hironobu is going to perform a new song for this film coming out. Now, we also know that there's going to be another film that comes out in 2024. That's already been confirmed. So it's two years after 2022. So we got more to come. Like So what we see from this series, what we see from this film is uh, hopefully going to prepare us for what we see in 2024. Um, to get back on, we not only saw a little teaser of what the CG Goku would look like, we also got to see pictures of new characters. Um, there's a new unnamed character who has like a pistol that looks like the Galactic Patrol, but he's also wearing like a very Gundam-esque type military suit. 
Um, and there's he's got a number on his chest. He's got a one and a two. So maybe these are henchmen. Maybe these are, are brother bad guys. But we also got Piccolo's got a redesign. Um, Piccolo now has a yellow upper arm and a red sash. He's also got... Uh, different shoes he's also we also see piccolo's got a namekian house and we've heard that uh this film is going to be more slice of life so it's probably akira getting back to his comedy roots but there's also going to be a lot of action and the action that we do see has been said to be phenomenal we also get pan so this is years in the future because pan is a kindergartner now she's in her kindergarten uniform and we were promised to, that we were going to see pan get down and get to action and we have krillin he went back to being a police officer but he still has his shaved head so we got character designs we got some actual video of the cgi and i think it looks great i think i'm very excited um you know japan always super hypes everything but Dragon Ball Z hasn't let me down yet. And I'm geeking out, fanning over it. I can't wait for the bucket to get back to talk about this. Today we were going to spend time talking about uh, Vegeta's God of Destruction you know, transformation. Uh, but we'll have to get into that another time. But new character, uh, there's the more that goes on. This article comes from Anime News Network as well. New characters will appear, appear in the film. There will be a virtual Dragon Ball Com booth of the franchise uh, website. The film was scheduled premiere 2022. The release schedule may differ depending on each country and the region. Original creator Akira Toriyama is in charge of the screenplay and character design. He was also um, he has already started work on the script while. Uh, the previous film, Dragon Ball Super Broly, was in production. We knew that he got started way ahead of time, and it seems like he started this now for this film that's coming in 2024. Toriyama um, shared a message with fans, and all new movies since Dragon Ball Super is, is currently in the making. Uh, just like the previous movie, I'm heavily leading the story and dialogue production for another amazing film. I really shouldn't talk too much about the plot yet, but preparing for some extreme and entertaining bouts, uh, which may feature an unexpected character. We'll be charting through some unexplored territory in terms of visual aesthetics to give the audience an amazing ride. So I hope everyone will look forward to the new movie. And this is the the, the tweet and message that he put out months ago that we read before. And now this is what you're watching now is what we're getting. Planning for the new film project to begin in 2018. Uh, or planning for the new film project began in 2018 before the release of Bra uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly. The film has a goal of telling a large-scale story. Aside from story uh, composition and character design, Tori Toriyama is also writing lines of dialogue for the film. The film will be the 21st anime film in the overall Dragon Ball franchise. The Dragon Ball uh, Super Broly film opened in Japan in 2018, and uh, it earned $120 million worldwide. So we're vastly looking forward to this. This was the message. Um, and again, you can go to Anime News Network. You can go to YouTube and just type in the Dragon Ball Super Heroes. They gave the logo. We're going to uh, move forward just a bit to look at some of this character art. As you can see, well, in the background, it's just beautiful. You got Kami House right there. But here's your Piccolo. Piccolo's boots are different. He's a little bit more slender, but Piccolo is in his battle gear. He doesn't have the cape on. He doesn't have the hat on, so we know we're going to get some fights from uh, Piccolo. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward a little bit more. Here's Piccolo with his cape in his downtime. Here is baby girl Pan in her dress uh, with her little hat on. Now, my question is, if we're getting Pan at this age, are we getting an older Goten and Trunks, and do we get a fusion? I feel like the unexpected character he talked about here, here's uh, Krillin, is it might be Gotenks. It might be another villain that we haven't seen in a while. Um, but with the new characters that they're giving and the new kind of slender aesthetic, I'm very excited to see because this slender build lends to uh, bigger moves in martial arts that you can see. Everything's not compact. Everything's not very muscular and, and dense, which makes it hard to see some moves. And then it also gives them the, the speed aesthetic, which will change the play. If you've ever seen One Piece films, they change from film to film the art style just, just ever so differently, ever so slightly. And a slender design gives them much sleeker feel, uh, smoother transitions. Now, where we're going right now, this 
uh, area right off to the left. That's Piccolo's house. But this is where Piccolo lives, of course, a waterfall near you. Right. Um, and I'm I'm very happy that here's a closer picture. We're getting to see a Namekian house because Piccolo, we've never known him to go home. We've never seen him go anywhere. He just sits at under waterfalls and then out on plateaus or in uh, the, the mountains. And he's just training all the time. So this is where this is where he lives. Um, and it's just things like that. Akira is still exploring the world, expanding the world. Like we have different universe now. We have Piccolo's house. Um, let's go to the new character. Here is our new characters. As you can see on the chest, there's a one, there's a two, red cape, blue cape, red and blue. You got your lasers. Um, and there's unnamed characters, so we don't know who this character is but of course they look villainous and he's got two razors on his head he's got two on his chest he's got one razor on the head so maybe the the number of razors gives you the the number that they identify with but let's go ahead and go to the teaser um the logo and let's get goku moving around and basically it was just goku kind of it was is a it was what akira did with dragon ball super bowl they given that animation of goku bouncing around and hitting the stands but it's singularly on him so here is the trailer and this is what it's going to look like in cg it's not too bad it's not heavy cg the cg looks a little bit different than what was in broly it still looks kind of matted not too glossy but that's what we're gonna that's the world that we're gonna live in. And I feel like it's a step between the video games and a step between what has always been drawn. Um again, if you want more information about uh Dragon Ball Super Superhero Geekdom one oh one, go to the YouTube page. He's done like three or four videos about all the information that's coming out, all his connects, all the things that he's found out. So that's the place that I would direct you guys to go because he's going to have accurate information for you and more insights than, than what they're trying to give up at, uh, currently for this film. But I'm super geeked. I'm super excited that we're going to get all this stuff, all this Dragon Ball uh, game and stuff. What's up, Steve? Nice art. Uh, thank you, We Pipe. Thank you so much. Yeah, I got the uh, art at uh, Akon's. Akon's then some some friends out in Cali. So let's keep this show moving. Uh, I don't think I have art for it. But if we go back to, to the new scene, uh, boom. Right there, as you see it. That's the power of Grayskull, folks. That is the power of Grayskull. So I watched Revelation. Now, if you don't know... Like just like a little mini, mini brief history, because I think me and the buck are going to go into it or I might do a separate video for YouTube. Masters of the Universe is a line that I have loved forever because I had the toys and the mini comics, which came out in 81 before I watched the series. Right. I had those from that time. I was born in 86, but we had like my mom uh, collected toys, comics. My grandma worked at. Oh, you, so you get the toys in the cereal box and there's comics all around, uncles, things like that. So I had that stuff and I had the TV series, right? Uh, and the thing that makes this unique is He-Man, Masters of the Universe, all that stuff is owned by so many different companies. But the start is similar to Transformers, which I always loved. Transformers was a toy before it became an animated series. So the Masters of the Universe toy line was created by Mattel in 81 uh, and first released in stores in 82. And theirs was different from the uh, the, the, the three and three fourths inch size, like G.I. Joe's. They were five and a half inch and they were just big and bulky. Um, then the next thing that you had, you had the comics that not, they started in 81 and ran through 89 and then DC picked them back up and did some in 82 to 83, I think. And then you had like a video game that came out in 83 and then you had He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, uh, the filmation, which led to She-Ra that ran from 83 to 85. And that's kind of where everybody gets into this. But He-Man's Revelation is uh, a continuation of what started in 81 with that comic, the mini comics and the comic series, which was heavily, you know, kind of. I don't want to say steeped in Conan, but it's kind of steeped in Conan because He-Man 
before was just like this blonde barbarian that went around killing people. And it was basically this war torn world where there was a lot of blood and death, people, you know, battling and dying and stuff. And I mean, very, very rough to survive in. And then we get this nice little, um, animation just like, and I remember buying these VHSs or renting these VHSs along with Thundercat VHSs and watching them. And you're getting the animation where you're learning a lesson each and every episode, right? So it transformed through time, but we're getting a continuation of that first raw element, kind of like uh, Ronin is a continuation of the Ninja Turtles, the actual Ninja Turtles, not the fluff stuff, the the TV and the cartoons that we got in between. So Masters of uh, the Universe Revelation, this five episode series on Netflix. Um, Rob David is the executive producer. Mattel had got in contact with Netflix because they want to do this series. They got with Kevin Smith as the showrunner. And then you had writers like Mark Bernardin on the show as well. And then the amazing cast, Mark Hamill and Skeletor and Kevin Conroy as Merman. Fucking unbelievable. Uh, and, but to not only see one of my, not one of my favorite characters, but I did like him because he reminded me of Swamp Thing and shit, Moss Man. To know that Moss Man is uh, the original Skeletor, the OG Skeletor himself, Mr. Alan Opper, uh, Opper, Min, Opperman, Opperminder. Uh, I always fuck up his last name, but A.O., was crazy because he's the one like if you listen to earlier versions of the show me and like, he man he man you that he man that skeletor voice when he's asking questions his uh fucking laugh the way the type of villain he is just fills us with joy so it's it's nice to see that he's back in the show and he's honored uh as well as the series itself being honored because uh, you're seeing everybody Stinkor didn't even he was in the toy series didn't even make it into the actual series I had a Stinkor toy um, and that's played by Jason Muse is getting in on the show Stephen Root as Cringer and Cringer didn't talk this time as Battle Cat um, uh, uh, Newman as Orko and not having to use a voice modulator to make that Orko voice just doing it himself there's so many uh, fucking amazing voice actors and people are part of this cast that made the show magical. Tiffany Smith did a great job as Andre, uh, Andrea uh, or Andra, Andra, or Andrea, because uh, she's following Tila, who everybody's like, oh, this is a Tila story for me. And again, this is a two part series, right? So we don't know the full conclusion. We don't know the full story. But for me, what I saw in, in Masters of the Universe was a story of what happens next because master of the universe anybody can be mad as if you hold the 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 power sword you can be master of the universe anybody can it's not just held for he-man or the champions of old they held the sword at that time so and we saw this when they tried to do the live film which is owned by a separate company uh skeletor got the sword and he was the master of the universe right so We're getting to see this journey where some good guys and some villains have to get together and kind of fucking Lord of the Rings it. They're trying to find their purpose. And also there's something that happens where they all come together and they have to work together. So I I love that series. I love the the quips, the jokes. I love the, the voice acting was spot on. But really like the adventure itself for five episodes was too short for me. But it builds to something the sacrifices that everybody makes the first part being a father and and daughter type story, as well as a story of finding your place in this world at this time. I really enjoyed it. And the transformations, the battles, the fights, people are getting stabbed and they die. Like me and Jessica were watching this. Like they, they just die. They just died in this show. They just killed them. Holy shit. It is it was good. You can have whatever opinion you want. Netflix always knows what they're doing. Uh, they had there was like an article I was reading not too long ago. They lost so much money. I mean, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and didn't even phase them because they still have X amount of subscribers, and they go based off of their logistics, what they see in the numbers. If the numbers say the shit does well, they keep doing the shit. And this for me hit what I was standing up the entire time watching this, like a little kid, just like in that world, like, Oh my God, uh, not trying to spoil anything. But again, like I said, Kevin Conroy, there's Merman, there's uh stink or Triclops here, beast man, Evelyn, Skeletor, man at arms, Tila, 
Cringer, Oracle. And now if you know the comics, Oracle, like it was so much stuff. And then Castle Grayskull itself. My mom hit me up after this uh, yesterday and was like, hey, you have all these these toys and stuff. Do you want to, you know, give them away for the show? What do you want to do? And then like she's going through there and you see like uh, uh, the ship, Krang ship for the Ninja Turtles or the Ninja Turtle Lair or the... Um, uh, Cave of Wonders for Aladdin, all of the toys and shit that we used to have. It brought me right back to the space. I have He Man, I have several different power swords. I have the one where it comes together because one was purple for Skeletor, one was silver for He Man, you know, for the toys, and you put them together and you get the ultimate sword. So I was super excited about this. I love this show. Five episodes, it goes by quick, but again, this is part one. I can't wait for part two. Um, and that's my fucking review. God, like trying to get everything in. We're almost at an hour. Let's go ahead and keep it pushing. Let's go into anime and manga of the month. Uh, where did I put this at? There's so much shit here. Here we go. Let's go. Bam. Right there. And I got to, yeah, up right now. We're talking about Tokyo Revengers, the boy with the plan. He goes back 12 years in the past just by touching the hand. He's going to do it. He's the man. His name is Takamichi Hanakaki, a freelancer who realizes his life is shit and the only person that he ever loved uh, back in middle school. She's dead now because the illustrious and ruthless Tokyo Manji gang is is running wild and when he thinks back to his past he was a part of this gang but he was tortured the entire time so now he goes back in the past to change it and take revenge and try to save Hina the only girl he ever loved and have a happy life um the time travel the fighting all that shit is 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 nice and the story right now like the inner turmoil within different gangs and how the rivals like high school gangs versus middle school gangs. I like it. It's a, it's a nice story. It's something different that we're getting because it's slice of life, but it's also action, but also super dark too. Like people die. Like, it's, Oh, it, it's, it's nasty. People die real bad. Uh, and just like, and it gets you, it gut wrenches you too. Ah, I can't even talk about it. Um, let's see, let's dive into this one. We never learn is your manga of the month. Again, like I told you, it's one of the ones I just started, but I, I put it down to finish Mashal, so I'm jumping back on it now. Also known as Bokubin, um, and illustrated and written by Tashi Sutsu. Uh, this series follows the story of Naruyuki, a high school student tasked with tutoring three female geniuses, geniuses as they start start to gradually develop romantic feelings for him but it's also a comedy because our boy is trying to answer questions in every class to show that he has an intellect he knows what he's talking about but they always raise their hand faster and it comes from a place that they are not even acknowledging the fact that the work and the things that they're answering are hard they're sitting there taking naps waking up within 10 minutes writing full novels that have the teacher in tears they're looking at things and doing other stuff and then run up to the board to solve a problem like it's nothing and then also point out the errors that the teacher made and shit like that so it's funny that they're intelligent but then they also need to be too and then they all start figuring out the world of love. So this is a great one to read. Um, you can read and I give you another watch. Girlfriend, girlfriend. This goes right along with this. But vizmedia.com, $1.99 a month gives you access to so many manga titles that you will just drown in them. Hopefully no paper cuts because it's all digital. But these are the places you go. Thank you for joining me again. Like I said, this is the podcast that believes that Krillin is the strongest human. And has the best life in DVD. He has a child. He's married to 18. She has unlimited energy. She's strong. She's all about her money. Right. And she encourages him to be better. He has a, he's the best life. Strongest human. Come on now. And I'm actually reading. Uh, there's a series that's out on YouTube now. It's what if Goku, Vegeta, all those guys died. And Goten was the next savior of Earth. And he was trained by Krillin. Krillin gets strong enough. He gets to the power level of Frieza's final form on Namek. And then Master Roshi is also training Goten as well. It's amazing. Uh, the lessons they learn and then how people kind of connect Goten to Goku. 
Um, but yeah, check out all these series. There's all these different manga series. And you know that I'm writing my manga, my comics. Those things are coming as well. But to help advance and push those along, patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show or Elijah underscore 5000. Or simply, you know, if you want to throw some stars at the stream on Facebook or uh, hit that uh, donate button or subscribe on Twitch, you're more than welcome to. But simply sharing the podcast helps out a lot. Liking because this is something I do because I enjoy it and I like talking with you guys. So that being said, hopefully you got the majority of your news for Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Again, Geekdom, uh, geekdom.com, Geekdom 101 on YouTube. Watch the four videos he's put out over everything that's happened since Friday. Uh, watch Masters of the Universe Revelation. Not He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. That's a film, and that's a cartoon series. We're talking about Masters of the Universe, the Motu, more Motu, hashtag more Motu. This is the shit that I want to see more of. The, the transformation... The, the turns, the twists are amazing. Uh, and then it's not corny. It's not He-Man beating up a bad guy every single episode. You're getting depth in storytelling here. Orko was one of my favorite characters to begin with, but I, I really did enjoy Orko, and I really did enjoy Cringer, which was... <sighs> Cringer, Cringer is one that, that I've always loved. And there's uh, new toys coming out uh, as well, but you guys can check that out yourself. Um... Uh, the comic book news, Suicide Squad, once that comes out, let me know what you guys think. I have not jumped on Black Widow yet, but I will, and when I do, I'll give you my review. Right now, I'm rewatching WandaVision, Loki, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier for like the fourth or fifth time because I like them and because the, I, I'm trying to see what I missed. I'm trying to prepare for the, this next phase. Uh, as far as the anime, My Hero Academia is coming out with some shit. I'm getting back on that. You guys will hear. And then I told you the Dragon Ball Super Chapter 74 as well as Loki 5 and 6. We're This Sunday when Buck is back, we're going to talk about them because uh, I got some things that I want to to spin by them. I need to spitball off of them. You guys are kind of quiet every now and then when I'm, when I'm breaking down the shows. And I need Bucky here. But thank you, I'm Elijah 5000. This has been a blast. I'm glad that I got to sit here with you. I know we were a little bit late today, but this is episode 273. Um, remember, look in the bonus track section for our next episode, which was the uh, fandom and fiction podcast I recorded the other day with Podbean for their storytelling podcast week. Um, other than that, look for the streams coming Saturday morning stream uh, with the Buckety, with Monica and Tekken 7 and Dragon Ball Fighters. Join up, squad up, bring your squad, bring your three man cell into the arena. And we will see what is the force of death. You know what I'm saying? We will see who will come out with the W. We will see who will leave with the L's. We see who is going to rank up and ascend to the next type of saying. But I'm Elijah 5000. Thank you guys so much. And I will catch your ass in the next podcast. Remember, subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Podbeam, add us to your playlist on Spotify or Pandora. Share. Follow on YouTube, blackandstudios.com, Black and Studios on all social media where you can find this podcast or my other podcast, which is strictly anime, a little bit of anime, or you can just follow on the Facebook pages, the the Twitters, the Instagram, all under Elijah Bailey Show. But I'm Elijah 5000, and I'll catch your ass in the next broadcast. I'm out. Thank you so much for downloading the show. Monica and I appreciate it so much. You could have downloaded it from blackandstudios.com, Apple Podcasts, Podbeam, wherever it is. But continue to show your love and support for downloading the show. And then also share it with your friends. Watch us live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. And follow there on Sundays.